right. Got some great information for federal employees today on another episode of Fed Smart Podcast. I'm Jesse. That's Stephen. Today we're talking about required minimum distributions from your retirement assets, obviously including your traditional TSP. So um, Stephen, try to say required minimum distribution three times fast. It's, you know, for our listeners, it's it's tough it's, to do. For us, we're filming on a Monday morning. I won't do that. <laughs> well, gonna we were going to we were going to try to entertain our people, but we're going to jump right into required minimum distributions, also known as RMDs. Uh, so if you see anything, RMDs, required withdrawals, they're all synonymous, but the official IRS um, terminology is required minimum distributions. And so first we get a lot of questions. Why are there required minimum distributions? The simple, straight to the point answer is your favorite Uncle Sam, your greedy Uncle Sam, wants his piece. You contributed to these retirement accounts all these years, tax deferred. You didn't pay taxes before you contributed. They were tax deferred. When you withdraw from your tax qualified accounts, which we'll talk about here in a second, what institutes a tax qualified account, when you withdraw, you're going to have to pay taxes. And so Uncle Sam wants you to pay taxes and is forcing you to withdraw whether you want to or not. If you don't withdraw, there's hefty penalties later on. So you have to know this is going to be important to know so that you can plan accordingly, so that you know how much you're going to need to pull or have an idea of what you're going to need to pull. You don't get hit with a huge tax ramification in your 70s, because that's most common for most people, it's going to be in your 70s that all of a sudden, you're going to have to start pulling from some or all of your accounts. And it can cause you to get bumped up a tax bracket, maybe or pay way more taxes than you need to. Or so if we're the gonna market's you... rough, and yeah. you're all in the market, and they're still going to, they're still going to send it to you. So just yeah. be aware of that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I didn't want my withdrawal right now because the market's down, like Steven's saying, and they're going to say, well, it doesn't matter. You have to pull this. We sent it to you. So deal with it. So you want to plan ahead of time. And whether you're years out from retired or you're already retired, even some of you who are already pulling required minimum distributions, you're going to get a lot of great information out of our, our short podcast today. So you fully understand what's happening. But as of right now, February 2024, the required minimum distribution age is 73. Used to be 70 and a half. So we get a lot of people that still think it's 70 and a half. Then they pushed it back to 72. Now it's 73. And then they're actually pushing it back in the year 2033. <laughs> if you plan that far out, it's going to be age 75. And so what happens is if you're not working, and you have money in the traditional TSP, and you're again, you're not employed by the federal government, you have to pull a required minimum amount. And it's based on your previous December 31st, the year before you turned 73, the account balance at that time, they're going to go off of that and current interest rates and actuary tables, uh, life expectancy tables, they call it, the IRS tells you how much you have to take out, the minimum amount you have to take out for that calendar year to suffice the RMDs, hence, hence the word minimum. So you have to pull out at least that much for the calendar year to suffice the RMDs. You obviously can pull out more if you need to, but you have to pull out at least that amount. Now, this is for any tax qualified retirement account traditional IRAs, traditional TSP, traditional 401ks, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, it may be inherited IRAs are a little bit different. We'll talk about that briefly, okay, because there are some rules with that. But we're talking about retirement accounts in your name. And what they're going to do is they're going to take the totality of your qualified assets from the December 31st previous year, and they're going to say, okay, you need to pull at least this much per year. So let's just give a quick example. These are not actual numbers. This is just an example. But let's say somebody had $100,000 in a traditional TSP. Well, based on current life expectancy tables, you just turned 73, the IRS might say you need to pull $3,800 for the year on your $100,000. So sometime throughout that year, you need to pull at least $3,800 
or the following year you will have hefty hefty tax penalties now and if they're your money using is a divisor table too that's yeah. what and that's how they're coming up to, with those figures yeah they're coming up with those figures that's irs that's telling the tsp it's telling your ira what those rmd percentages are it's not tsp deciding it it's not if you have money you know at a at a brokerage account like schwab or td ameritrade or fidelity or anything like that they're not deciding it it's the irs tables each year like you said divider tables and life expectancy that they're figuring out what you need to pull each year and you have to abide by it or you're going to pay those those penalties so if in my example you have that hundred thousand dollars and you have to pull that 3800 for the year if all of your qualified assets in, is in the TSP, the TSP is actually automatically going to send you that RMD. They they send it to you proactively to make sure that you pay for it. So you don't get to necessarily time when you want to do it. Like Steven said, if the market happens to be down, you can say, wait, don't pull it yet. Let it bounce back maybe later this year and then pull it. They're going to automatically send it to you. Your other assets traditionally like your traditional ira and most other retirement accounts they're not going to send it automatically you have to actually request a withdrawal either on your user login or filling out a form depending upon what type of vehicle you're in you have to actually proactively request that withdrawal but what's really cool is if you have rolled your tsp into an ira and let's say that all of your assets are outside the tsp really quick all of your tax tax qualified assets, you can actually pick and choose which accounts to pull from if it's outside the TSP. So let's say, for example, I have four IRAs and all four of these IRAs add up to um, $400,000 for nice, simple math. Let's say that the IRS for this year says my required minimum distribution has to be $12,000 as an example. It's not going to be that round usually, but I want to give easy examples. So we have to pull 12,000 for the year and all my money is in four individual IRAs outside. I can pull that $12,000 in my example from maybe one IRA or maybe 3,000 from each IRA to equal that 12,000, but I can pick and choose which one to pull from. And as long as I've pulled at least $12,000, I've sufficed the RMDs on all the other accounts. So maybe if you've created, you know, where you have some accounts a little bit more aggressive and other accounts maybe more conservative and your aggressive accounts are down, you could leave that one alone and you could pull from your conservative accounts. One other thing to know uh, about the TSP is again, you can't do that. They're automatically going to send that withdrawal. And on top of that, some people say, well, I went 50% C and 50% G so that I have more moderate portfolio. I don't have 100% in the market. Well, Stephen, they're going to pull proportionately on. Yeah. yeah yep. They're going to pull uh, prorated proportionate withdrawals. So 50% is in the C, 50% is in the G, like my example. When they send that RMD, 50% of your withdrawal comes from the C, 50 comes from the G because that's how you have it allocated. So however you're allocated, proportionate withdrawal is going to going to come out. So you want to be aware of that. And people think, well, the market's down. I'm just going to tell TSP, don't pull from my C fund, my, my stock fund, leave that alone and pull from my G fund. You can't do that. So you want to be aware of that. IRAs though, and I'm not saying you should have everything in an IRA. I'm not giving financial advice. IRAs though, you can. You can say, well, most IRAs, I should give that disclaimer. It's not always, but pretty, pretty much all exception. IRAs. Yeah, exactly. Every time I say something, there's one exception out there or, you know, something, there's so many different options, but most IRAs, it's pretty safe to say you can say, leave my uh, stock fund alone and pull from my fixed income fund or my money market or whatever you have inside the account that's not down. You have that, that option. Now you have to pull from tax qualified accounts. Your other accounts like your Roth, Stephen, you don't have to pull from those, right? No. And that's a kind of misconception, especially with the TSP, because years and years ago, you did have to. It, well, it was the rateable withdrawal. They would take it from the Roth as well. That changed. You do not have to pull money from Roth IRAs or Roth TSP. Right. Exactly. Like I said earlier, a good rule of thumb to know which accounts you have to pull from is the whole reason you're having to pull is because Uncle Sam wants you to pay taxes. So if any of your accounts are not taxable at tax income levels, you don't have to pull from it. So Roth accounts like Roth TSPs, Roth IRAs, individual accounts, like if you just have a brokerage account, a stock account, you know, you do pay capital gains on those when you pull, but that's not 
income tax. So anything that's going to be taxed as income and it's tax qualified and it's a retirement account, those are the accounts that you're going to have to pull from. Now, your brokerage account, your IRA, the TSP, they should send you a letter and they proactively will tell you, you you've reached RMD age. But some of those communications are now sent via email. They can end up in junk junk boxes, things like that. You are responsible ultimately to make sure that your RMDs are pulled. So you want to make sure that you know when you're obviously turning 73, you know that, but what's your plan for RMDs? So now understanding what RMDs are going to look like as we get to RMD age, retiring before and maybe years out and things like that. You can start planning for RMDs and not get hit with huge withdrawals that you have to take. And when I say huge, you know, sometimes we have several hundred thousand dollars to millions of dollars of tax qualified assets, and that could create quite a large withdrawal need, which could be bumping you up a potential tax bracket or causing some big tax ramifications. So knowing this ahead of time, years out, you can start doing some RMD planning where maybe you can start pulling even before you need to keep your tax qualified assets lower and start putting it into a not you know a non qualified account or you can there's all different ways of planning for RMDs you can maybe look at Roth conversions you know year out put years out put some some money into the Roth side so you want to start looking at well how much am I going in you know qualified assets here Am I going to have at 73? What's my potential RMDs? And there's all kinds of RMD calculators. The reason we're not giving you the exact percentage is it does fluctuate every year based on those life expectancy tables, interest rates, and then also based on your age and which you have to start pulling from it. You know, for example, if some of you are RMD age and you're already years into it and you're 78, 79 years old, you are having to pull more than the 73-year-old, somebody who just came into RMD age. So it's a different percentage for each person. And you can look at the irs.gov has a RMD calculator. There's other calculators out there. If you Google it, what's a, you know an RMD calculator and they will you can plug in your assets and it'll give you an example of what your RMDs will be. Or even better, you can talk to a retirement specialist or a tax professional and you can start planning for your RMDs so that ahead of time, you're, you're not having to pay more taxes than you need to. You're not having to withdraw more than you would have had to if you would have planned accordingly ahead of time. So if you've got a lot of money sitting in retirement accounts, there's a lot of things that you can do and you can meet with tax professionals. And again, there's way more than we're going through here and we can't because we don't wanna give advice you know, with that could cause tax ramifications. We don't know everybody's individual situation, but there are some really good ways to plan to make sure RMDs are not a gotcha and end up costing you way more taxes than they need to. So you definitely want to proactively talk to a retirement professional, a tax professional, and start planning for those RMDs from your thrift savings plan or your IRAs or maybe significant others, IRAs and 401ks and things like that. So you know what type of RMD ramifications you're going to have at that later age in your 70s. As of right now, 73, eventually age 75. So plan accordingly. It's going to really, really help with taxes in retirement. I know everybody listening just absolutely loves paying taxes. Um, so I'm if talking you love about taxes too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're driving right now and you're listening to RMDs and taxes and expectancy tables, you might have already pull caused over. an accident. <laughs> yeah, pull over. You're dozing off. But uh, you know, all kidding aside, you know, not fun to talk about taxes. But the people that uh, you know are are least impacted by taxes are the ones that create a plan. They look at it proactively, and they're not caught off guard. And then all of a sudden, they're getting a letter in their 70s of you have to pull. One quick example, Stephen. I had somebody. Um, man, was it last year or the year before? Time is just flying by, but it was sometime in the last two years. He got some letters he didn't know. He hadn't worked with us, talked to us ahead of time, and he got some letters, and he had to pull about $49,000 in withdrawals uh, for RMDs, and it was going to cause quite a bit of taxes and things like that. And I didn't tell him too much, but if he had proactively planned, um, he could have 
pulled way less, probably about half based on some of the things we were talking about. And it would have saved him a lot of taxes if he had planned ahead of time. And those are just examples of things that can happen. And you might think, well, I don't have that much money. It's not going to be me, but definitely uh, can be. And you'll be surprised uh, how quickly it adds up. So definitely want to plan and take a look at all of your options ahead of time. If you're in retirement and you're doing well, you have a lot of money saved up, that's kind of your next thing to be aware of. Lastly, with that too, Stephen, if we're if you have a plan of for longevity, well, here's how long we're going to live and and make sure we don't run out of money. Sometimes RMDs and having to pull more. Some people go off of just that interest rate or just that RMD rate at 73, and they forget that it's going to go up as they get older. And so you you really want to look at those RMD tables and have a plan for required minimum distributions. Our goal at FedSmart is to make sure you're comfortable when you first retire and remain comfortable for the rest of your life. So that's why we wanted to mention these RMDs. And um, so thanks for listening. Hopefully that gave you some good insight. If you don't know, where to find more information on, on RMDs, definitely hit us up on our website, fedsmartretirement.com. We'd be happy to go through and, and answer all of your questions. This podcast, by the way, is coming because we were getting so many RMD questions. And so we love all your questions. Keep them coming at fedsmartpodcast.com or fedsmartretirement.com. And we'll continue to get all your questions answered. Hope everybody has a really prosperous 2024 and look forward to our next episode. FedSmart podcast is meant for informational purposes only and should not be taken as financial advice. FedSmart, Jesse Black, Stephen Puckett, and Federal Retirement Consultants are not affiliated with any government agency or OPM. Jesse Black offers securities through Creative One Securities, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, and Jesse Black and Stephen Puckett offer advisory services through Creative One Securities, LLC, an investment advisor. Federal retirement consultants, FedSmart, are not affiliated with Creative One Securities, LLC. For more information, you can visit fedretirementconsultants.com. 